Hey, this is Bill with Media Unlocked, and today I am sitting out in front of the beautiful 3O Studios in Lexington, Kentucky. And I have been putting the Centennial 2 from the Colorado Tripod Company through its paces. Now, we're about to go upstairs to the studio, and I'm going to tell you how this thing works, but I just want to let you know it's a beautiful fall day, so I hope you're out shooting. I've had it for four months now. I have taken it down to the Great Smoky Mountain National Park at least twice. I've taken it to the Big South Fork National River Recreation Area. I've had it out in the Red River Gorge. Of course, I've used it here in Lexington because I've been doing a lot of night photography lately, looking for car, uh, car light trails, things like that. And I used it here in the gorgeous 3O Studios here in Lexington. And it's been my main tripod for the last four months. So I want to show you what I've learned about it, how easy it is to use this, talk about the many pluses and the couple of minuses that I have found while I've been playing with it. So for starters, let's talk about the weight. This thing is unbelievably light. If you take the center post off, it's 3.1 pounds. It's 3.4 pounds if you leave the center post on. Now the center post, of course, is very controversial. This one is easy. All you have to do to take it off, just unscrew it. Just like that, it's so easy. You can take off the hook, and then you can just slide the hook right back in, screw it into place. Of course, you have to get it even to do that. And I'm right-handed, so I'm just a little challenged. I'm going to leave that off right now. But it screws right back up in there. This gives you the hook, by the way, that if you want some weight, you can hang your camera bag from it or a sandbag or something like that to keep it more stable. 50 inches is the maximum height with the center post out, 58 with the center post in. In or out, your choice. If you put it in, the tripod is, of course, a little bit less stable. But I have had no problems at all. I tend to leave it in, especially when I'm looking on the studio, because sometimes I want to raise my camera just a little bit, and it's so much easier to do that with the center post intact. So I usually leave it in. So very light, 3.1 pounds, 3.4 pounds, unbelievably light. When is that useful? If you've been hiking five or six miles, you've had a lot of gear on your back and your tripod is not something you want to add to it. Now, how do they get it this light? Of course, it's carbon fiber, 10 layers of carbon fiber. But if you take a look, look at all of the holes that are carved into this. Basically, what they did was carve out any of the metal that didn't need to be there. Using stress tests, I assume, they have taken out and made this thing absolutely as light as they possibly can. I've never had a tripod this light. Um, all of the controls, and this is something that is really cool, all of the controls are right here on one side. Now, if you take a look at it, this is great because if you've got your camera here, I've got my friction knob right here, I've got my ball knob right there, and I've got my pan knob right here in the back. So I can take it and I can just very easily adjust those. Now, take a look at something. This is a modification that I'm going to suggest to you. This little device right here is from Agritech. It's called a leveling base. The beauty of it is that once you get it on and everything's calibrated, you take it one, one knob, you've got your hand on your camera, and this whole thing just levels. Now, why is this useful? If I'm sitting out in the woods or on the edge of a creek and I've got one leg up on a rock or what have you, I don't have to adjust the legs to level my camera. It's got a spirit level on it right here. It's really a useful uh, piece of equipment. You ought to really take a look at these. Uh, it's amazing how many people don't know about these, but it's just a leveling base is all it is. Now, the controls are on one side. Great idea. Most tripods, you have them a third of the way around, which means eventually, if you're going to use all three controls on one shot, you've got to take your hand off the camera. It's a lot slower. So I love having them all on one side. Legs have a great ratcheting system. Most tripods, you go up and you have to change the ratchet for every single click. With this, you can take it up and it ratchets down and then locks into place. Makes it much easier to use that way. Of course, the legs, once you use them, will go all the way out, giving you, by the way, a 2.5 inch height for your absolute lowest. Well, probably 4.5 inches now that I've got the leveling base on here, but absolutely a great, so easy to use the ratcheting legs right here. Um, 
The bottom of it, the legs, you notice they've got the standard ball that you have. Well, if you unscrew them, it comes ready with little spikes. Now, why is this useful? If you're out in the forest, if you're on a beach, these spikes will help you dig in and help you keep your tripod from moving. In order to get them out, by the way, you'll notice there's a little hole in here. You just run any form of Allen key that fits. That gives you the leverage, and you can just unscrew them very quickly, very easily. Now, the one thing that uh, you're going to notice is these are really not that big. I would prefer a longer spike if I'm going to be using them. So I went out and I bought some accessories. This spike right here replaces it perfectly, just screws right into place. You can leave this on all the time, of course. You notice it's got a little ball covering as well. Slide your Allen key in, give it a last little tweak. Now it's good and solid. When you want to, use it as a spike. You take that off, and you've got the same little mini spike that this had on the original, but now you've got a thinner piece for three inches. Why is that useful? Because a lot of times I'll go down and I'll be shooting a waterfall. My favorite waterfall is called Dill Falls. Dill Falls has a little creek coming off the waterfall. The water is probably about an inch and a half to two inches deep usually. If you put your tripod in that water, the flow of the water will cause little micro vibrations that will cause your shot to be out of focus. If you use this, you have a smaller surface. It will transmit less vibration all the way up. And of course, the carbon fiber is better at absorbing that than aluminum is. So I really recommend these spikes. And by the way, if uh, you're shooting not on a beach or a forest floor, but if you're shooting on rocks, this is where you want to use this particular foot right here. This is called a rock claw. Um, rock claw, you just screw it in. Again, these are all interchangeable pieces. And these surfaces down here will grab onto the edges of the rock, keep your tripod that much more stable. Accessories that you might want to really consider investing in uh, if you want to have a full-time tripod that goes everywhere and falls and all of that good stuff. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the knobs. Nice, easy twist knobs this time. Some, some tripods, Manfrotto, for example, use a lever system. Nothing wrong with that. I like the feel of the twist knobs, just because when they shut off, you know they're tight. The clamps, sometimes I don't always get them right. OK, so let's talk about the Highline ball head. Yes, it's got a cutout right here so that you can shift up to a portrait mode or landscape very easily. Not a problem at all to shift over. It's got an Arca Swiss type connector. I prefer the kind with the clamping lever. Makes it much easier. I know when it's on, when I've got it on my tripod, I know when everything attaches. This has got a release clamp as well as a lever clamp. Now you can get it with the knob, the very traditional style. Make your choice. It doesn't matter which one you get. Both of them will work well. And by the way, just for the record, when you put your camera on, always lift it quickly by the camera. Make sure that tripod is attached. Don't ask me how I learned that lesson. Trust me. I love the clamp. I love the head. I love everything else. Let's talk about some of the accessories that you can get. It comes, of course, with Arca Swiss plates. By the way, yes, a spirit level built into the back of the plate. That's really, really a useful thing to have. If you need it, you can have specialty plates. They have, this one is for the R5, for example. They make a nice long plate if you want to have some panoramic control, things like that. All of these are available. All of them work well. Now, I've got one other accessory here that I want to kind of show you about. Makes it nice and easy. This is something I didn't know about until Tripod Month came out, and I started really, really taking a look at accessories for tripods. But it's called a gear hammock. Basically, it attaches with Velcro right here above this first set of knobs and sits right there and you can put some of your gear in it. Now, why is this useful? If you'll notice, I wear glasses. You probably never saw that before, but you never have the right glasses on. So I wind up taking them off and just setting them down somewhere. And then halfway through the shoot, I suddenly yell out to everybody, hey, nobody walk around. Find my glasses before you do anything. Not the best look, especially if it's in the middle of the night and you're out with David Disponet shooting stars because well, we do that from time to time, but I'm better at it than he is.
So, okay, he's ignoring me now. <laughs> That's a good thing. I guess he's not talking to me anymore. At any case, being able to put gear right here and have it right here in your tripod makes it handy. You could put in a red headlamp, for example. You can put in a hat if you need to take it off. All of this very easy with this one additional piece of gear. I got that off of Amazon. It was so, so easy. It was actually very easy and very cheap. Now, care and feeding of a tripod. One of the things that I've never really done is taking care of a, a tripod. Um, maybe that's one of the reasons why I've had so many tripods. But what I would like to do is show you just a little bit about how to take care of it, how to control it, how to make things just a little bit easier. One of the things that is always kind of problematic, if you scratch carbon fiber and you scratch it deep enough, sooner or later that carbon is going to fail. I would hate to have the carbon fiber in my tripod leg fail when I'm sitting on top of a cliff in the Red River Gorge. So it's a good idea to protect it. So they make these uh, little pieces of canvas and Velcro and padding that you can wrap around the fiber of carbon fiber of your leg. Well, those are great, but they're 50 or $60 for a set. That's a lot of money for a set. So I was watching a YouTube video from Hudson Henry called Approaching the Scene. Really, really great uh, series of videos, by the way, if you've never seen it. But he suggested a do-it-yourself trick where you go out and you just buy handlebar tape from a bike shop. It's very light. You can get it cork. It goes right around here, feels good in your hand, provides a little padding. On a cold day, you're really going to appreciate this. But more importantly, if you just kind of knock this over, it's not going to scratch your carbon fiber. This will absorb the wreck. If something gets damaged, you can just peel it off, put it right back on. Easy peasy. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about something that you really should do to your tripods. It's amazing how much we abuse these things. We put them in water, we put them in sand, we take them out to the beach and get them all salty. One of the ways to protect it, unscrew each of your clamps, okay? You got three of them or four on each of your legs. Take just a little bit of grease. You don't need much. Just put a little bit of grease right here on the edge of your bottom threads. You don't have to put a lot and you don't have to go up far. The whole idea is to give it a little coating of grease. Now, when you put it back on, that's going to spread around and it's going to put a little light coat of grease on all of those threads. Why is that important? Because now when sand gets up in here, and it will, when it gets up in here, it's not going to cause this to stick. And that is a really important thing. Do this with each of your joints on all three legs. And yes, you can pull this out, but be careful because most good tripods have a little cap right here to help with the friction. And if you break that or lose it, you will never get this leg working the same way again. So yes, you should put a little bit of grease on all of your threads. Do it on the threads on the legs, do it on the clamps, do it on the screw head that attaches your head to the uh, apex of the tripod. All of those surfaces needed to be protected. You don't need much grease. I went to my bike shop when I bought this. Yeah, I ride cycles and it's got a little bit of grease. Very easy to do. Now, in short, this tripod is, if you take care of it, could be the last tripod you'll ever need. I'm hoping it's the last one I ever need because, well, if I had all of the money back that I spent on cheap tripods, I could have bought every tripod out there just about. It comes in, by the way, at $449, which is a little bit expensive, but if you think about it, that's an expense that if you use this tripod for 10, 15, 20 years, you're more than going to get paid back when you do it. So how good is this? I got a recommendation word of mouth from a, a friend of mine named Jeff. That's why I looked into this originally. I liked it so much. This is going to become my travel tripod. Travel tripod, great, by the way, because it's the only one I found that comes in under the TSA limit, so you can actually use it as carry-on. My friend Tim liked it so much, he went out and bought the Aspen ball head, which is the next grade up from this one because he really liked the way it looked. I'm going to give a try for the landscape tripod, get an Aspen ball head on the Series 4 legs, see how I like that, because I just have a feeling that as much as I like this tripod, I'm going to like that one too. So hey, take a look at the Colorado Tripod Company. Take a look at the Centennial 2. I really, really like this thing. 
and we'll see you later. Let's go!